I mean, I was the subject, I was a protagonist of a documentary called Mika uh, that premiered at Sundance last year. Aspire, and is, iconic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Then it never came out. Let me tell you, like we, we don't own anything from the label. We don't own the music. We like we have nothing. We made zero off of all of this yeah, time. Yeah, you're kidding. It's like we don't need anything from it. If we did that, that made it that all worth really it. That really, honestly. What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Girl, Let Me Tell You. And I want to know what's on your feed. Oh, there's a lot going on. Well, first off, I want to catch up with you. You've been in New York. I think I've been on your, I've been on your You've feed. You've been on my feed. I, I follow your guys. <laughs> I follow your stories. around the world. Do you guys? I do, I do be posting a lot. I went to New York City for a month. I know that, you know, it's been interesting to go back home. I don't know what to call home yet. I feel like a traitor is weird. I, I no, think your home is always New York. Thank God. I didn't want to say uh, LA is, you're is born and raised in New yeah. York. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that I was okay with everybody else because I'm always gonna be a New Yorker and going back home reminded me of that. But I'm down to explore this is LA. Your staycation. This is, I don't know if it's a staycation, but like stay workcation. It's a stay workcation. Yeah. Like it's been fun. I've been living. I've been chilling. So what was your highlight of New York? What My highlight of New York was one of my dreams came true. Which one? Oh, so um. I know that you ladies are learning a lot about the stand-up community and me and my best friend Sasha, who's on 3Gs in a pod oh, as yes. well, um, we just did history. We actually did the first comedy show at the United Palace Theater and it was an all Dominican lineup. It oh. was the first time, yeah, it was the first time comedy was part of the New York Comedy Festival uptown New York. So it was, there were a lot of firsts and I think like my, one of my comedy dreams has come true. So like everything else wow. that happens after this is- I just want to say since the day that I met you, which was like in March of last, of this year, yeah, it feels it's, like last year. Yeah. Till now, it's like you have grown so, so much. much. Thank you, Ivana. And like I matured and like Thank taken you. it with grace. Sometimes, you know, maybe not so much. There was one time, it was fun. <laughs> but like throughout it, I'm just so yeah. proud of you. you Thank know? you. I know. It's not easy. I saw those videos of that show and I was like, wow. I knew you were yeah, having oh, the best day. We're not even done rolling out the social media plan, but it, it's been fun and it was really nice spending time with my nieces. That's really the most important thing for me, my nieces. Just hanging out with them. We went to dinner, we went to the family Aww. dinner. It was just cute to be back home and to feel appreciated by my stand-up community. So I'm working, I'm working out here. What you have you up. been doing, Ivana? I saw you in Colombia. Yes, I got to go to Colombia for two weeks. I became the ambassador of this organization called Powerful Children of Colombia. And uh, they are, like, they, they support Colombian-led organizations that help kids through sport, arts, and education in, like, really vulnerable areas. So this mm -hmm. time I got to go to different parts of Colombia that I've never been to. Like, I've been to Colombia since I was born. Yeah. But I went to, like, Barichara and Cabrera and places that, like, are in the mountains yeah. and playing with these kids that, like, I mean, I would never have the opportunity. It was really inspiring and beautiful, and I ate a lot of arepas. Let's go arepas. I can't sit very comfortably now because of it, but I'm really happy in my heart. So it was a really good. nice two weeks, three weeks, yes. I'm so happy for you. She's always doing good for the community. Jessica, we saw you trailing your trailer. Trailing I, 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 the trailer. Every time I go in yeah, your stories, Jessica. I just see you on the highway. Like, can yeah. you explain what's going Jessica on? Jessica belongs to the freeway. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I belong to the freeway. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah not the streets, the freeways. This is true. So what's going on? Are you pulling, like, talk to me about the trailer life. Okay, so I bought like a travel trailer. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled, but you see like a car towing, towing a, tra a trailer. Mm -hmm. There's a shower in there, a sink, an oven, a stove, a bed, anything you could possibly need. It's little, you know, sleeps maybe three or four, but I'm planning on taking it on December 11th from Los Angeles, driving it to Tennessee, where I'm gonna oh. park it there per permanently. Don't say where, please. Yeah, don't Somewhere in Tennessee permanently, no. and I wanna like live in it and then maybe be back, be by coastal. Is there a shower? Like there? There's like a shower. Okay. There's a toilet. There's anything you you could possibly need, but like really live God in it and move. Wait, so how, like, do you, I'm gonna move. how does the toilet thing work? Um, there's like a tank, and you gotta like dump it out okay. like at certain campsites and things of that okay. nature. I, I'm learning. Also, oh, like by the way, compost. No. Okay, sorry. No. You have to dump out the tank. Well, good yeah, thing but girls don't do no, any bad stuff. So I know, but there's like a tube and whatever. And grow up, Ivana. <laughs> Woman shit. Okay, oh my I'm sorry. god! It's 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 no, we don't. It's hereditary. I don't Wait, have. What it. is happening? Right. <laughs> Let's move on. It, some people have it. Some people don't. Either way, guys, I'm excited. <laughs> my biggest concern is getting oh there in one piece god. because if you've never towed or hauled something, in one something, piece. Yes, girl. You're driving a truck. The truck is towing a thing. Like 
it can move, it sways right, in the right, wind, right. it can, like there's so many Wait, things I that I'm that, thinking like, about. Wait, I saw that like the doors open in one trip. I don't, that's scary. The door open in one trip, the car Imagine broke down like, another one. Imagine like out. Oh my God. That's what I'm saying. So pray for me, it's gonna be a really fun adventure, but I just, again, I just need to get there. You, know you guys, what we're losing Jessica. No, we're not. Streets. You know what I think? <laughs> to the highways. She's not for the streets. I think you're for Love is Blind. Yeah, you really? should, you should really? do Love is Yeah. She you is the best candidate for Love is Blind. Yeah. She's ready. And should I do it? I yes. would do it. I think I, you know, I think I see us both on Love is Blind. Like yes. I would just be a moment, but you would find true love. Yeah. You yeah, think yeah. so? Yeah, like I'm definitely going viral. Like, oh, I didn't like that. I feel like you'd yeah. find true love and then you'd go on the honeymoon and then <laughs> be like, ew, is this what you look like? Nah. What about I, me? Aren't you in love already? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 I am. It. Oh, uh, well, my we have a great episode today. I'm already excited for it. I, know. I think this episode, to your point, is about growth. And, yes. you know, I think the, the overarching theme, I'm going to say team, the overarching theme, like, is, um, it resonates with both of our guests today. Well, That's all true. three of our guests today. All three of our guests. I'm really excited to talk to them. I'm like, we have like a music theme going on. We today. have a music yeah. theme. They're iconic, obviously. They are. Doris, Anai, and of course Prima J. Who? Come on. Corazón, corazón. Come on, iconic, you guys. I know. It's gonna be so great. Exciting. All right, you guys. We are back and ready to introduce our first guest, Doris Anai. All right, you guys, Los Angeles born. Come sit, girl. <laughs> While well, I show you off a little bit. Los <laughs> Angeles born, Mexico City based singer songwriter Doris Anai brings a spirited so called soul to her rancheras. Such beautiful music. I've seen you perform live a billion times, by the way. <laughs> Starting as an artist manager and community organizer, Doris, known for her unconventional journey, released her acclaimed debut EP, Aprendiendo por las malas in 2022, uh, garnering attention from Rolling Stone and Vogue. Okay, Whoa. girl. Nice. <laughs> and she is now set to launch her following up EP, Aprendiendo por las Buenas, in Uy. December 2023. Yes. Woo! Girl. Thank you for being here. Sorry, we clap a lot. We're like really excited to have you. Thank you for so having nice me. nice to meet you officially. Yes. I know. Thank I've heard so me. much about you the past three years that you've been, you blew up like all over, so. It's been a wild journey. It's been a so wild journey. I, yeah. I'm learning about you okay. now, and I just moved to LA, so I'm like learning Welcome. everything. Yeah. And <laughs> I think they were telling me that you started a more traditional career and then switched into the creative, which we were all kind of talking about. Like we all needed to take some space to really find who we were. So, what was that process for you? Like, tell me everything. Well, yes. Yeah, I mean, I grew up performing, so mm -hmm. it's always been in me. I was born into a family of musicians, and then in college, I found the music industry mm -hmm. and really all the doors started opening up for me there and I was like I think as like a kid of immigrants and you finally find like your lane to blossom into a career you're like okay pues aquí me quedo. like mm -hmm. yeah. this is where I can maybe try to get a job and then I mean yeah the music industry is very temperamental so I went yes, through <laughs> I went through the journey of having like my first job getting let go starting my own company and then that was a whole Jeez. another whirlwind. I started a business when I was like 23 years old, like oh, wow. not going to business school, just off of like a lot of vision and just having a passion for us taking space in the music industry. Yeah. Then the pandemic happened oh, the and the whole music industry shut down. Mm -hmm. And I think when the industry shut down, we all recognized that like the music was still there, right? Mm -hmm. At its core. And summer 2020, I like really fought really hard, like the, you know, Honestly, I like I fell into a really deep depression, and mm -hmm. and me trying to climb my way out. I got into a fellowship at USC, yeah. and that's what really like opened up the yeah. the space for me to be like, all right, then I can I have the space to be creative again. And that's when I decided to close my company. And it took me some time because I really thought I was going to continue in the music industry and all of that. But at the same time, I was like, okay, let me express myself. A, like a, it was like putting a toe in the water and then a foot yeah. in the water and then yeah it was always like in the back yeah, of your mind I was mind. gonna say that like because I think all of us like you acting was always in the back of oh your mind God. you know yeah. you always had comedy in the back yeah. of your mind yet you're stuck in some of these jobs sometimes that you're like I love it it's cool it's close you know it's you're money. in the music industry yeah. I'm not the one singing although I know I can do it but actually pulling the trigger is so scary for people so I had only really known you on like the management side of things yeah. but then when I saw you making that transition, I was like, that takes 
balls because yeah. everybody in the industry already knew who you were. They knew you as this person. So yeah. people like all eyes are on you. The music has to be good. You know, people are going to be oh, yeah. hyper critical of like yeah. whatever you put out. You know what I mean? That just comes with it. Honestly, when I was in the music industry side, I found a lot of success very quickly. And so I was like, oh, this is my lane. Like this is mm -hmm. like where I was meant to be. I thought like, okay, all these years growing up performing is what allowed me to have really the deep understanding that not many mm -hmm. on the industry do. Mm -hmm. So that way I can have the language, that way I can be the best advocate for the artists that I'm representing. Yeah. I really thought like, oh, I went through all of this so that way I can be on the music industry mm. side of it all. And I felt like, okay, like, yeah, I'll sing a karaoke sometimes or like with my family. Are you that girl? Or yeah. Yeah. That girl that can sing a karaoke? I'm that annoying girl. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, but you needed this because everybody was killing all these songs. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. But honestly, it was. Where I was like, okay, I can just do this for fun when I want to. But I think things just got really real when, you know, it hit the fan. Because I was the face of the film, I think I took a lot of, um, of the flack for it and assumed a lot of responsibility publicly, even though I wasn't a producer on the film, I didn't make this film, with cancel culture and how quickly things that. move oh, online. Culture, culture. Do you feel like you're um, part of the cancel culture? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, people think that I was trying to mediate privately for the entire year. We're gonna get deeper into all yeah. of these conversations. Let's get into a very special version of Calladitas No More. We have tarot cards in honor of your music video, yes. Sin Vergüenza. Yeah, yeah, they're really cute. You're gonna love them. Okay, card number one. The Fool, beginning spontaneity, starting new journeys. Share a moment when you felt compelled to begin a new journey. How did this transition or decision to step into the unknown influence your path forward? in your career or in any other aspect. Okay, so in your journey in specific, you jumped into the music industry, which again, mm -hmm. like in our culture, that's really scary. Our parents don't yeah. really always understand it because it's not like your traditional job. Tell me a little bit about that switch in your mind where you're like, I'm gonna go into this completely unknown, you know, sure. part of your life, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, a brand new journey for me where when I, found myself starting to like intern in the music industry. I was like on the major label side of things and I was really the only Latina in those buildings. Like, mm. And then I remember seeing like one Latina in like the elevator and realizing that she just came from the Miami office from Sony Latin, you know? Mm. And I was like, oh, that's why, because they put us all in those spaces. And I, I just had this like burning fire. I wanted to feel like, well, folks like us should be able to take space in the general market, right? And so then that's how I kind of stumbled across into that, got my first job in the music industry after I graduated as a tour manager. Again, more I'm like a girl signed to Columbia Records. Like wow. it was, it was. Like a whirlwind. It was a it? whirlwind, it was a whirlwind. But when I got let go, I was like, all right, like I'm forced to now create a new journey for myself. And that's when mm -hmm. I started Miha Management. I was like, February 2017. 2017. I remember that. Yeah. And That's crazy. I think like when you're faced like with a crossroads, you know, it's like, again, like you said, like yeah. we can either repeat a new cycle, I mean, repeat the, the same, same cycle, cycle over again or create an, a new a new path for yourself. And at that point, I felt like no one was hiring me. So I was like, okay, if no one's hiring me, then I need to create my own job. And then that's when it, when it all began yeah, and so yeah unbeknownst to me I mean what was to come my way and but but we're here now we're aren't here? you so yeah. grateful to know like the ins and outs of the management business as well and like how many artists are so blind to like what goes down underneath so it's like, a blessing have, and a curse though honestly I really know too, I know you'd rather just be like not I know, know I always much. say that too sometimes I wish I was a little bit more ignorant because this is kind of <laughs> like when you know everything it's just it is like, bliss okay. ignorance is bliss, is bliss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. bliss until it's not <laughs> right until and you're like not. yeah all right let's do the next one guys so this one is knight of wands so mm. at one point, did you choose to bet on yourself? The pandemic, yeah. I mean, I think, I think as a music manager, I bet on myself in one way, right? Mm -hmm. But this was me betting on myself to put everyone else on. And I think mm -hmm. advocating for others is so much easier than advocating for yourself. Yes. And it wasn't until the whole music industry shutdown happened and then every like sign was coming my way to finally express myself as an artist. And I had like put out like one video on my 27th birthday of singing rancheras in my backyard and it like, it changed my life, honestly, and, what are you and, what are you and, and that video is what led a lot of people to being like, they didn't know me, they didn't know that person, that person, I mean, the people who grew up with me knew me as a singer, but 
the people in the industry were like, you can sing? Like, wait, what? Oh, and, and, so and it wasn't until fall of 2021 that I decided that I was going to decline the offer to launch this record mm -hmm. label and finally really plant the seeds for me to finally put out, put out my own music. And I felt like, okay, if I bet on myself to bet on all these other artists' careers, then why can't I do that for, for me? I think that's interesting because the next card is the tower card. So this card is about transformation. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, have you ever blamed other people for your shortcomings? In my own processing, I think, yeah. I think at first, like your knee-jerk reaction is like, why did this happen to me instead of how, why did this happen for me? Mm. And like going from like victim mindset to being on the other side of it, it takes some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was the subject, or I they try not to use the word subject, but I was a protagonist of a documentary called Mika uh, that premiered at Sundance last year. That's fire, Dis iconic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, um, and then Disney bought the film. This? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then it never came out. And the what? there was a public fallout. It gets really, it's, I mean, details that aren't mine to share. I think there's like sensitive information that, yeah, that's just not mine mm -hmm. to share. Um, and then a whole bunch of stuff happened behind the scenes with Disney. And um, I mean, I think everyone tried their best and had the best of intentions to, to put this film out to reach the people that it needed mm -hmm. the most. Um, but then I was, because I was the face of the film, I think it took a lot of, um, of the flack for it. And, assumed a lot of responsibility publicly, even though I wasn't a producer on the film, I didn't make this film. But I mean, with cancel culture and how quickly things that. move oh, online. Culture, work, so cool. Do you feel like you're um, part of the cancel culture? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, people think to publicly that I was trying to mediate privately for the entire year. Like that's what people don't know. What people don't know is that like, I didn't want to Don't Worry Darling, the documentary, you know, where people think about the drama before they think about what the actual film is. It's a great metaphor, right. you know. And, I didn't watch that movie, but I know the drama. And I wanted to handle, exactly, and you yeah. wanted to, I wanted to handle it as wise as possible. Like, I had a past um, as being a young manager and learning through failure and trial by fire. I had a deep fear of conflict where I had to, like, do my own work to understand why I was so avoidant and know where that trauma response came from, right? Mm -hmm. It's either you're avoidant or you're confrontational. Mm -hmm. So when things hit the fan with the film and no one really knew that me and the other person who was also highlighted in the film had a falling out, like, weeks after, and I really had no idea why. And I was like, all right, like, this isn't a safe space for us to speak to like one-on-one -on -one anymore, like let's bring in a mediator. Like let's bring in, like let me try to now really confront like my own fear of conflict here, but try to find to, a way to do it in the healthiest way possible. So I advocated for mediation Sheesh. the entire year. Girl, that, that's, and, and you're doing yeah. this publicly. Like that's the thing that a lot of, sometimes people don't understand is having to deal with this publicly. Yeah. So many personalities, so many egos, so many factors that mm -hmm. in your mind, you can't control so much of what happened. You know, you take accountability for yeah. what you did do or what, you know, but, but you can't really control so much of what happens in your no. environment. You can only take control of how you reacted in a certain situation, which we're human. Um, hello, like you're not always gonna get it right. So how mm -hmm. did it go after the one year that it's mediated? And no, I mean that the thing is, the mediation was denied the whole year, and so once things got taken publicly, I think a lot of folks thought that I was like evading accountability and that I am trying to like, um, what is it? Try to hide these things when like people had no idea that I was trying to handle these things behind the scenes for months. Mm -hmm. And so once People it got don't know everything. No, That's exactly. So once it got taken yeah. publicly, none of this was stuff that was trying to be handled privately. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because it shouldn't have been at the forefront of that. Especially like, hello, we're like two young Latinas at the being the face of a new like the first Disney original documentary. Like we didn't want I knew I didn't want to like be difficult for of them. Course, like we're we're, we're already trying so I'm hard to like this. make our way into this yeah, and now be we're like here. seen as that exactly especially because it was things that we that could have been prevented yeah right. do you feel like you ha like this almost had to happen for you to be able to like get as deep as you do with yourself and oh, like absolutely. the avoidance and like the trauma it's almost like it was meant to be and maybe it'll for come sure. out in a different vehicle in a, in a more powerful vehicle yeah. the same story right? it was definitely i mean it was a reckoning in my life for sure i think like what the tower represents is reckoning. like when things that need to fall apart oh 
like they will because they because it was like a, it wasn't even a stable foundation Ooh. it wasn't even for you you Ooh. know everything happened all once it was Sheesh. like the film didn't come out in september and it was the same week that i also found out my grandma was dying oh, yeah. and like that oh, woman raised gosh. me oh, and yeah. then it le led into her passing away in october <sighs> and then we'll we'll lead into it too but at that same time it was like a my really horrible breakup that happened oh, at that same time. And then weeks later, all of this erupted online. Oh. And I was like, can I have a break, please, God? I was like, I can't take this anymore. At that time, I was not thinking good thoughts and thinking You're like my life is- more negativity. Oh, of course. You're... I felt like I, my life wasn't worth living anymore. Like, I felt like such a deep shame. And I'm like, oh, I'm never coming back from this. What's the point? Um, but I had to be faced with that, to be like, no, like, I'm surrounded by, like, my angels and my guides. I'm, like, I think in that time when everything falls apart, what's revealed is, like, what was the strongest foundation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, like, oh, like, on my unconditional love that I had, like, oh, wow, like, all the people who what's were surrounding me at that time, that? oh, my God, my family and my chosen family. People, like at that time I was surrounded by a lot of people. People wanna surround you when you're at the top. But in that moment, what was revealed to me was a lot of people that were around me that were not really for me. I'm going through a friendship breakup right now. I'm like, it sounds like, thank God we went and break up in private. Cause I can't have that. Imagine, in yeah. Imagine, yeah. It's Friendship breakups well, are sometimes just, just as hard just, as that. Yeah. 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 Even I'm more. Going through one as well. Worse. <laughs> well, this goes into okay. our next question, you guys. Three of Swords, Betrayal, Suffering, Healing. Mm. How has Betrayal played a role in your transformation? Who hurt you? Ooh. I'm not gonna lie, I've been hurt. <laughs> I've been hurt, I've been hurt but some of that hurt can be your own perspective. Yeah. Like maybe you're looking at a situation from your, we're talking a lot, like there's a lot that you said that kind of like filled in some blind spots for me. Yeah. Like everyone's just operating off their survival mechanism. So like me being confrontational can be um, jarring to someone that sees confrontation as violence. Yeah. So I think that for me, betrayal, it has to, I have to take accountability of like, okay, is this betrayal or like, was I actually not putting up boundaries and like over giving or over sharing or, there's just been a lot of things in the, in, like in my journey in comedy where I'm like, wow, like that person used me, but did they use me or was I just not putting up boundaries, you know? So I don't know, I think that we can be hurt, but you can't cling on to that. That's my POV. I, I experienced betrayal like, two or three years ago, like my real form of betrayal I ever had. And I learned a lot from it because I got betrayed by somebody that I loved and all my biggest fears came to life, like cheating, lying, just mm. shadiness, like that I've never experienced before. And what I learned from that or what I realized is like, when you lie, even if you do it because you're, you wanna like not hurt somebody or you wanna like, you know, not to get truth, you're creating a false narrative. And then I'm working off yeah. this false narrative. So every lie you're saying, I'm, I'm working off of it because that's what you're giving me. And then we're creating a false life. Mm -hmm. And then everything just crashes, you know? So like betrayal is something that, I probably won't go through something like that, I mean, knock on wood, as bad, but taught me a lot and, it taught, and I forgive now and I realize that I won't get myself to like stay for that long. And I'm stronger than I was. So like, mm. it's, it's a blessing and a curse, yeah. yeah. And earlier last year, my old manager was pulling cards for my ex on Three of Swords came out. There was already compromises of trust within the relationship. So I saw a photo and I was like, no, I don't want to believe this. That's my homegirl. Like, she would never do something like that. It's interesting, sorry, it's also interesting sometimes the people that do end up betraying you, where it's Ooh. like, damn. Yeah. Out of everyone, people, out of everyone, it was I know. you. Yeah. I mean, well, the Three of Swords is literally the cover of Sin Vergüenza. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the, that's the heart. That's like the big. I, again, it's, it's another the, card it's I would the always card. get. <gasps> it's the cheater it's the card. Cheater, so, you yeah. so yeah, I mean, earlier last year, my old manager was pulling cards for my ex, and Three of Swords came out. Mm. Yeah, that, that should have been my first sign. Yeah. Right? That should have been like oh, right, together. Yeah. yeah, it was like one of those like yeah. on and off toxic, mm -hmm. abusive. Mm -hmm. What was the sign for two years, a Leo? Oh, for two years, and it was. Yeah, I mean, my intuition on. knew though. Yeah, there was yeah. already compromises of trust within the relationship, and so um, there was like this open door policy on his phone if I ever needed to, because for me to trust him, right? And like it would never happen again. Blah blah blah. Just me trying to forgive oh, someone. Oh, got it. And so I knew the last week that my grandma was alive. He was acting kind of sus, mm. and I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right, my mm -hmm. intuition. I had a dream mm -hmm. about him and a friend. The dreams oh. are real, the dreams oh, are you real. Him and a friend? Him and a friend, and a friend of, of yours? Or who mm. was a friend of mine. Oh, mm. Betrayal. Oh, I've been through that. Yeah. So you had it that clear, the vision was it, that The vision clear. was very oh, yeah. clear. 
And then days later, I had a gut instinct to be like, hey, like I've been feeling really off about X, Y, and Z. Um, I don't think I really feel comfortable with like the friendship that you're growing with this friend of mine. Like something feels something feels really off to me. Because mm. I saw photos of them on set together oh. the week before. Oh. And I, was like, I, I, know no. I, I know this. Exactly. You know the green line test? You know the green line test? You know the green line test? What is this exactly? The green line test is if like somebody is like, the green line test is like if people like body language, like if they're like como facing a certain way, the green light test means there's like, um, <gasps> they're lying there's or? chemistry or whatever, oh, right? I've never heard of this. And so I saw a photo and I was like, no, I don't want to believe this. That's my homegirl. Like <gasps> she would never do something like that. And it was Tuesday and I asked him like, you know that open door phone policy? Like I haven't asked you to, like f for this. Like can we, can we, like, can, we right now? can we do it right His now? His heart dropped. And he was like refusing. I was like, you have something to hide then. Like, See, if you obviously. start a policy, you got to keep it open. <laughs> like, how do you, yeah, yeah. you backtrack on the day that I asked? I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I know, and, he, and he, ref he refused um, until the phone was finally handed over. And I saw his messages with her. And he mm. hit her up to be on her guest list for a party she was DJing that night that I introduced them at months before. I was like, this is it. I was like, no, this is it. This so is you it. stopped that day. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like left his house immediately and like wow. followed me to my car, blocked my car door, yeah, wouldn't I let should. me leave. Oh, it leave was horrible. Alone. And I was like, no, I'm breaking this curse. And he's like, I'm not a curse. And I was like, you know what? Well, like all the women, that is a uh -huh. curse. I was like, all the women came, who came before me stayed with men who mistreated them out of survival. And I don't need you to survive, so get out of my life. Bye. Um, and then literally weeks later, they're together. <gasps> weeks. My friends saw them. <gasps> Oh, but they're well, I need to know the it girl, was weeks after. I need to know to the me. girl's friend sign. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> mm. um, okay, I just wanted to say that I cannot tell you how much I relate to that story. It's I think it's happened to a lot more girls than we think. Like friendships or girls that you thought you could trust that end up being so sketchy. I'm sorry I went through that. But we feel good now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's always a process. And through your music, I feel like you're healing a lot, right? Like you feel like it's inspired so much of what you've been putting out. Oh, absolutely. I mean like Literally, my friend, what the breakup happened, end of October. My friend saw them together at the beginning of December. This was when I was already planning my move to Mexico. And oh, so once I got to Mexico, I just was surrounded by mariachis. Like every single weekend, I was in Guadalajara. And then I wrote my version of Paloma Negra, which is like infamous ranchera of traición. Can you sing us a little snippet of your song? Just please. Uh, yeah. The parts um, that. Well, el coro. Um, el coro, yeah. El coro is. Um, Sin vergüenza se merecen y ahora deben de mi vida, de mi amor les di la conexión y ahora pagan con su alma, con su karma. Que el universo los cuiden como a mí me dolió. Actually, we, first of all, thank you for being here, Doris. We have a surprise for you. One of our guests came back because we want to give you a gift. Okay. Everyone make some noise for Sasha. I want to give you this jacket Thank you so because I commend much. you for it. You went to a whole nother country and you were living a whole different life and you, you got over it, right? Yes. Yes. You got over yes. it. Yes. Thank you so much. That's it's beautiful. Oh, so nice. Nice. I pass by your mural all the time on really? first. That looks so cute. I used to live in Boyle Heights. No I, went, I went from Boyle Heights to Mexico. I'm so proud of you. We don't need these men. We don't need yeah. these men. <laughs> Thank you, you so much for stopping by, San Juan, and thank you, Doris, for coming. Can can you let everybody know when your album's coming out, your next album, and your social, so everybody can yeah. reach out and get touched? Sí, Por Las Buenas comes out December 8th, and you can find me on Instagram, como Mija Doris, on TikTok, como Doris Anaí Muñoz, and pues, thank you. Uh, and thank you, San. Girl, bring energy de nada. everywhere she goes. She goes. Side 
Bar, and we are drinking wine by Maz Vino, Please, and Wonderwork. Chismosa wine is from the vineyards <laughs> of Contra Costa County in California, produced using minimal intervention winemaking methods. Mas Vino, please, is Latina owned, and the label is cute yeah. too. This is so, so cute. cute. So Everyone cute. follow them. Mas Vino, please, and Wonderwork.LA. Let me try it. Let me try, try it. That's it. Wait, don't leave me out of it. Thank you. That oh. was backwards. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm. It's oh, good. good. Oh, gosh, it's really delicious. I know you love natural wine, Vivana, too. <laughs> this is literally delicious. But another pair that we have that is aging like fine wine oh. are the Prima Jager. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just gonna give you, I'm gonna show off for you guys. Go Everybody ahead. already knows who you are, but Prima J gained widespread recognition with their hit single, Rockstar, in 2008. So literally iconic for us, which became a dance anthem. The girls also became the first music act to appear on the cover of Latina Magazine without ever releasing a record, which is insane also. Prima J <laughs> is now embracing the joys of motherhood and family, which is lovely, and remains dedicated to reconnecting with their audience through occasional musical gems, fun merch, and product collaborations. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, you guys are yeah. so I know. It's like a dream come true. Yeah. I know. It is a mess. When, when we found this out, so we were yeah. literally, we started were seeing hype. I've been hype. singing since the day we found out, baby, I'm not alone. Okay, I want to know. Mm -hmm. You guys are from that now? Put us on that song. Song. We're right. from Rosemead. Rosemead, so Rose the suburbs of Rose LA. Yeah, Rose My Rose question Rose is, Rose how did you guys get discovered? Oh, like, how gosh. did you make, what was like the first thing Let's, that got numbers? Uh, I'm gonna say, that's wait. a long story, but long story short. Long story short. <laughs> yeah, long story um, short. Okay, so our cousin modeled. It's kind of like right place, right, right time, time type deal. Our cousin modeled, mm -hmm. I went with her to this area that had like talent scouts and I was like, I'm gonna sing. I just walked around singing. I was like, I'm gonna no sing. No way. Someone's gonna, someone's no, gonna hear me. Going back and forth down the hall. And so this talent manager was like, I like your voice, like try the studio, come up, come to my studios, like this rinky dink studio in Linwood. And I was like, let's go, right? So I brought Janelle everywhere. We're sisters. We grew We're up together, we lived together every now and then. So We're she came with me everywhere. She kept me hype. Like she just made me feel Aww. confident. Like she had Aww. to be there. And they were like, do you sing? She was like, no. No, I dance, I dance okay. though. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. we were both dancers for so long. And they were like, but your personality is like the best. Crazy. Like you guys, like we have to do something. And we just started doing music together. And honestly, that's when. That's how we developed our sound and the chemistry that we had. It's literally had. just I mean, our, it is our really personality. Really singing. Yeah, yeah, it's just our personalities and our music. Like everyone's like, what kind of music do we, do you listen to? It's like nothing like the music we do, but the music we do is who we are together. Yeah, like your personality, right. yeah. your essence, yeah. your essence. Yeah. We're performers, so, you know? Exactly. Fame came fast, like it was yes. like, how, how, was Overnight. it beneficial to you guys? Overnight. Detrimental Overnight. to you? How, like literally. we had this, someone knew someone that was like, hey, Ron Fair wants to meet you guys because there was no Latin. Latina artists out yeah. back oh in the God. day in mainstream. Who were the main yeah. artists that was out when you were done? Nobody. Not, yeah, they were like the first. Um, not mainstream, like no. Like mainstream, where, you know, yeah. like speaking only English, because we live yeah. our culture, but we just, you know, we don't, we don't really speak Spanish. Like, I think yeah. I discovered, I mean, obviously, I'm from New York, so I think I discovered your music through Z100. Yes. So that's like the mainstream radio. So yeah. I'm like, oh. and it's interesting, because like, we always talk about how we grew up on different coasts, but me and Jessica, like, really bonded. Because I'm like, Prima J, you know? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, of course I Wait, know Prima J. Did you guys not go to school, or did you guys like, oh no, we went. We, they didn't sign us until we turned 18. Yeah, like exactly. That. At 18, then they so signed us. So they signed us, but we were working in the studio, developing our sound, going to high school, all at the same time. It must have been really cool to be like, we're working on a insane. record. Oh yeah, and wow. then, you know, the haters Nobody are like, was, okay, like, okay. okay. And then what happened? <laughs> oh, really? oh yeah, that was a big like yeah. ignition for us to be like, okay. They were this haters. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's I mean, why they loved us, but they were like, okay, yeah. okay, Jess, you know, I think okay. on top of the music, I think what you ladies represent is like, I feel like if I were making music with my cousins, it would be just like, it was like you yeah, ladies like literally. exploring your friendship, your yeah. having, fun. Having, having fun. Yeah, having fun. Yeah. Someone said, said like, uh, they were like, I used to like, do dances with my cousins routines, yep. just like in the garage. Yep. I'm like, that's, that's literally, literally how we started. started. That's we literally, literally what started have, it. Like, we had a video camera and we would just film ourselves doing music videos. So yeah. like Beyonce or Whitney Houston or I whatever, we just all, for fun. We like, were all doing that, but y'all got discovered. TLC Spice Girls, like, you go. know, that's, I feel like TLC Spice, Spice Girls, that's, Girls, that's like, like, That's a really good intersection. Yeah, sure. I feel like that's how it feels like. Yeah, like, yeah. Rock star, corazón. So then what happened? How did it trajectory? So somebody was like, we want you to meet Ron Ferry. We went to the record plant, which is like a huge, Record plant. Record and plant. And you know what? It was our first uh -huh. ever like 
like step into this world the and world. Chris Brown was there recording oh, wow. his second album. That it was so crazy. overwhelming and like we were just like whatever. We're Let's go. Go. We're like, <laughs> and we were like went into there and we sang uh, sang a song that we had a demo of. We danced for Ron and he was like, "All right, cool. Let's sign them to a um, development deal right now." Like. We didn't know what was going on. No, <laughs> we didn't. Yeah. And your parents were like, okay. But I think it's kind of good that we were like thrown into totally. it because we weren't like, we were us. Like we just were like, okay, whatever this is, no. instead of being yeah. like jaded, trained yeah. or like, yeah. you know, what, the, what, how you have yeah. to be to meet You're this real. person. You we were, were just real. like, whatever happens. Yeah. Like, let's just Straight go. out of high school, just there. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk for years. Who didn't like, talk? Me, me and, and her. Yeah. We have nothing. We made zero off of all of this yeah, time. Zero. We're just like, no, our, the most important thing is our relationship. I don't even care to do this anymore. What happened? You know, we were listening to you ladies, and then what happened? Yeah. When did you start making music? Why? Yeah, um, I always say, because I'm like super like, I was like, God was in it, because he took us out at the right time. Ooh, we, right time. When we got out, we didn't talk. We didn't talk for years. Who didn't like, talk? Me, me and my her. Cousin. Yeah. Like, Whoa. to each other. To, to each, each other. other. Why? It's yeah. there's so many different aspects of, yeah. like, People, the industry. The industry. <gasps> it's, like, not We dark. were built for the industry. Yeah. yeah. We were built to we were perform, too young to record. To understand yeah. it, you know? How dark it can be yeah. and how, like, manipulative People it can be. in your hey, ear. People oh. in my ear. Like, you don't need her. You don't need oh. her. Your cousin? You need your cousin. Exactly. Yeah. And both of us were like, if we're not doing it together, we're not doing it. But at the same time, we were on different pages because we had this person in this day, this person and this year, oh, we need you need a better manager. I'm not leaving this manager. Well, I need it. You know, it's it was hard. just it was hard, and it, we didn't know what what we were what was going on. No, but it did give us the opportunity to mm -hmm. kind of grow without each other to mm -hmm. kind of see who we were as people like, individually too. So, and then when we what reunited, was, I was gonna say, what was that first um, reunion like? Like okay. who called who? Mm -hmm. Wait, so, did we reunite? Yeah. I mean, I think we tried a few times, but it just wasn't authentic. It was. She had her baby. I had my baby, oh. and, and I was like, I can't. Me, like, what do I do? Oh my yeah. god. Like, um, I mean, I get emotional because I'm like, yeah. I need my cousin. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Nelly, no, don't do it. Don't do it. But I was like, oh man, I can't. Like, I can't. She can't. I can't not know her child. You yeah. know. I was so like, I was like, pick up the phone. We got Switch together. Yeah. We had an, like hours and hour hours wow. long conversation about all the miscommunication yeah. that things happened. That things I things didn't know. Things she didn't know. I didn't know. know and like, put like, all the pieces, pieces together. together. Yeah. And, and we're like, like why do we let that happen? You know. And we're just like, no. The most important thing is our relationship. I don't even care. To do this anymore this but we're gonna build the, this was it was 10 years off and on I yeah think. Mm -hmm. like and then finally after i had my daughter in 2016 uh that's when yeah. i think we really were like authentic like let's let's work on our relationship yeah uh -huh. i love that will, will there ever be a world where prima j maybe come back you does know a honestly, comeback. we would love to yeah you know, we always talk about, about it I was I mean, so oh, iconic to be a right. right. with you guys on a concert right now. Oh my my gosh. The cool, I mean, I have a five year old, she has a seven year old, so we're like in our mom era, you know, yeah, they're like sure. still young, but they're getting older. They're like super proud now, like when they see our videos and stuff. Yeah. And so we're not gonna say it's never gonna happen, but we want it to be the right time right. and the right opportunity. We're yeah. not just gonna like, yeah, I think you, know. you guys also have discovered how bad the industry can be mm, and how manipulative, yeah. and it can really flip your life upside down. Oh now with gosh. social media, it's even worse, like, so more much. Eyes are on you like mm -hmm. crazy, and because you guys are in your mom era, so much more is at stake. So much mm -hmm. more, exactly. so much exactly. more is at stake with yeah. the kids. I also think that was so. I know there's some downsides to social media, but I think I've seen a lot of artists do the indie route, and maybe that's yeah. an opportunity. I mean, we like, were like, I wish that was. Yeah. A, I wish a we could have done, done that back then. Yeah. Yeah. You have to deal with all these people. We could have just done it ourselves. There's so many but. people. I know Tanashi is an indie artist. Yeah. Victoria, I think Victoria yeah. Monet might be, and it's like they have their fan base. Yeah, and we're fan. I'm ready to be in the front row. Hey. <laughs> Don't tell me that. If, we, if we did it, that's the route we would go. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we yeah, would just want to be sure. authentic. You guys maybe hear it all the time, but you genuinely make the biggest difference in a little girl like mine's life. It's I'm not so even kidding because I was really bullied. I've opened up about it on the podcast, oh my but gosh. I remember only seeing, you know, people that didn't look like me. And then when I saw you, I fell in love. I would be like Stop on that. repeat. Stop on. It. Let me tell you, like we we don't own anything from the label. We don't own the music. We like we have nothing. We made zero off of all of this yeah, time. Yeah, kidding. But For real. those no, stories no. made That's why everything I said, worth the money? it. Yeah, go tell <laughs> but those stories, every gonna, time we hear those stories, it's make like it make, that, that's yeah. all that matters. Like we don't need anything from it. If we did that. That made it that all worth really it. Also, like, so. I mean, it's your legacy. Yeah. It's, it's your legacy. legacy. Like, like money will come yeah. and go, but your legacy yeah. is forever. People today come, they're like, you don't understand how this song or this lyric Change changed. I'm like, yeah. that's all that matters.
I think like, also I like that. the music representation. Like yeah. it's, it's, I'm a Gemini, so like everything. So like hearing that that's like the basis, like EDM rock mm -hmm. and R and B. That's yeah. so that's cool. Me. Yeah. Wow. Paramore meets TLC. Hey, like, that's me. That's us. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. Chaos. Chaos. <laughs> chaos. All right. Let's let's read some of these comments. See, you impacted us, but let's see what's going on over here. Yeah. <laughs> online, we're super excited. So the first comment is. If you listened to this when you were little, you are a bad bitch now. <laughs> I was, look at us. I think I've seen uh, something yeah. like that go viral. Honestly, we're like, yeah. listen to this when we're young. I love the chronic of what you did. Bad bitches, exactly. Listen, listen. You said it. They made it. We did something right there. Listen, <laughs> you raised us. And the crazy part is, you guys, you're only a couple years older than me. You know, sure. like the fact that you've yeah. accomplished so much and you're literally our age group, like it blows my mind. So, Aww. all right. Thank you for saying that because I don't think we give ourselves enough. No, you really no. Don't. And when it was yeah. taken yeah. away, we're really like, don't. what did we do? You know, but there's like, always just, there's always yeah. time. I feel like I feel Wait, like there might be another away. another wins. I love it. People yeah. are giving yeah. us that energy, and you know what? We know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, let's come on, Jess. Okay, come on. All right. Here's the next one. When I was 10, I thought these were the Kardashians. <laughs> also, this song's still a smash. It's oh, true. That. You were our literal yeah. Kardashians. That is so, so cool. Man, again, like, I, it seems like we're just like hyping you up, but genuinely, me and Glory were like, like crazy. They were so fanatic. I love that. Yeah. In the, I was like, can they hear us in the green room? Oh yeah. my God. That is Wait, amazing. That, you guys don't understand. No, we don't see ourselves like that at all. Our so, like, when, you so hear, when we hear it, we're like, that's crazy. Crazy. No, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, I guess yeah. I, we have so much energy right now. <laughs> Usually when we interview people, we're, we're a little bit more yeah, yeah. Right now we're like, this is like a dream come true. Like I was yeah. listening to you ladies when She's there was a boombox. I don't know if like Gen Z knows about boombox. We have to, we have to sit and record <laughs> the song exactly. yeah. when they came on the radio. Yeah, I was doing, I was recording my mixtape. Or, <laughs> even, like, or even yeah. like yeah. watch tape. the music video and then be in my in my own mirror. Like, yeah, yeah. So incredible so yeah. I love Girl, that. So what about this part? Yeah. Oh, what about that? Part? <laughs> or or okay. the not the hair clip. The hair okay. Hold on. Oh yeah, that, 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 that yes, yes. I never wanted those hair clips. Okay. But they were a statement. Cultural impact. However, yes. they put them in, and they're like, "We're gonna do a take with and a take without, just to please me." And then after it came out with them, and then I was like. Okay, and then it grew on me, and then mm. sure enough, people started getting it. was like a thing. cultural you moment. Know? That yes. will you literally started, started the clips, you the guys. Clips yeah. The clips and the shoes. <laughs> All right, I think we have some questions. Okay, there's also some questions from Aaron Troy <laughs> Music. Asked, does Prima J plan on releasing more singles, or is there a plan to release an EP? Yeah, mm. uh, I mean, sometimes we just, like, we release two singles in the last like few yeah. years. You did? Sometimes just fun, like nothing, we didn't promote it. Yeah. Like, but put it on the link. Yeah, because yeah. we're, yeah. we're just like, all the time, whoever like but... fans want to hear something, we're like, here you go. Like, you know, we don't do much, but like, yeah, we're always looking to please our fans. Okay, yeah. we'll put that, we'll put put it put it that in the comments. Okay, you got did it. You see, <laughs> did you see where Love is Wicked went viral earlier this year? I don't know if you know, um, I think it's Lena and Brick. I, I forget, that. they're two sisters okay. and they went viral. They were also out like in the 2000s. Brick and Lace? Yes, Brick and Lace, thank you. Yeah. 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 They were yeah. signing yeah. with Brick our label. Yes. You need to talk yeah. to them. Go on tour. Oh my God. Hey, where? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where Can you guys sing a little snippet? Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. yes I'm just going to say it's been a minute. I'm going to sing it. It's okay. okay. We'll, we'll do background. Um, it could be Rockstar or Coda Song. Um, okay. Even if it's okay. like yeah. Rockstar, like Rockstar. Seconds. All right, here we go. Don't worry, you're not alone. Baby, those days are gone. I promise you it'll get better. Corazón, a corazón. Here comes the rap. Yay! Uh, uh, if you're thinking about bailing out, I'm going to make it better. Hey. Don't worry about falling down. We'll get through this together. Corazón, corazón. No, no, you're not alone. Corazón, corazón. Hey. Corazón. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Why did you say that? Was that was hard. Hard. That was hard. 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 You haven't done that in 15 years. You haven't done that in 15 years. Cheers to that. We got iconic. Cheers, ladies. Thank you for having us. We love you guys so much. I've interviewed hundreds of people. This, this, I can retire. Yeah, we're done. I'm not kidding. You're better. I'm better. I'm better. You're better. You're better. I feel like Rockstar is gonna be trending on TikTok this week. I'm not. I have a, I have a few followers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to the algorithm. Hey. Jessica. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. For those little tiny amounts of people that don't know where to follow you, <laughs> where can they find you? Uh, Prima J official. At Prima J official Prima on Instagram. Um, yeah, follow us there and then you can get our uh, personal our ones personal from there ones too. Our personal ones there too. Mm -hmm. right, you guys, this has been so, yeah. so fun. Thank you so much. I'm Ivana Rojas. I'm Gloria Liz Mora. I'm Jessica Flores.
I'm Janelle. I'm Jessica. And we're Prima, Prima J. And, and this is Girl, Let Me Tell You. Tell you. <laughs>